This is the unboxing of the Nautilus CCFX2 fly fishing reel. The series comes in four different models, a 6.8, an 8.10, a 10.12, and a Silver King. The one I have here is the 6.8 model, which has a diameter of 4 inches and a weight of 7.6 ounces. The series comes in two different colors, black and silver, though you can get custom colors, but it will cost you some extra money. So to start off, we will look at the box. The box just has information about the, the model, which hand it reels with, and uh, if there's a spool. Um, over here it has information about the whole lineup from the Nautilus. Different uh, models here, the sizes, uh, weights, um, diameter, the width, just things like that. The back here, some awards that the company's won. On the sides, it's just a logo, an address of where the company is located, and that's kind of it. Nothing too fancy. So I just picked up this guy not too long ago from the, the fishing store. Uh, so they did put backing on for me, so you'll see that it's not a complete factory look. You don't have the backing on it. Um, but the first thing I see here is the Allen's key. This is used to change the retrieve. So if you're a right-handed retrieve, then you'll need to use this to open up the, um, the casing, I guess, and change the retrieve. Here we have the pouch with the reel inside. Uh, some kind of manual here. Just uh, thank you for purchasing, uh, purchasing their reel. Uh, warranty information, how to change the retrieve, and some maintenance instructions. And what's this? You get a sticker. And you get another sticker. And I'll put this to the side. Okay, so we're looking at the pouch here. Um, yep, just a normal pouch. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's well made, padded, has a nice strap on the top to carry the pouch I guess. Yeah, nothing nothing on the ordinary, just a normal pouch. But it's actually pretty good. So here's the reel itself. One thing I like a lot about this reel is the back of it. I think the back of it looks so sharp. It's nice, it has a nice design here. It's pretty cool. Okay, so the first things I notice when picking up this reel is it is quite wide. You'll probably see that the drag knob here is massive. A lot bigger than other reels, I guess, but that's just so you could grab onto it easier. Um, it does have an over uh, oversized knob, which is great to grab onto. Yeah, works pretty well. Uh, the colors in here, there's like a big red thing in the back here. That's the drag system. It does have like um, it uses like a double drag system. I'm not too sure what it means really. Uh, it just uses more surface area when um, the drag is engaged. Uh, the knob here, this is to attach and. I guess uh, screw in the spool and to remove the spool. I'll show you that in a second. Um, yeah, and I guess one thing about this reel is there's a lot of porting for drying the backing and the fly line when it's wet. Uh, has a nice design. It feels very rugged, solid, doesn't wobble. And that's kind of it. So I guess the first thing to show you is how to remove the spool. So to remove the spool you need to unscrew this. There's no simple switch like some other reels have, but uh, I guess this is the knowledge design. And you have that unscrewed. The screw here doesn't actually fully come off, so you'll never lose it. It's nice and attached, which is really good. Um, spool weighs very light. I have backing in it, and it's still really light. Yeah, it's not going to bend on you. It has a nice ring on the end. Yeah, nothing else to say about that. Here's where the actual mechanics happen with the drag system. You can see it there, it's pretty big. This weighs very little. 
it's solid here, it's not going to bend. And that's kind of it. So to reattach this, you'll see that there's three kind of divots here. Just line that up with whatever is in there, if you can see. It'd be hard to line up, so the best thing to do is just put it in and move it around until it falls into place, like that. So if it's like that, that's not far enough, just give it a little turn until it falls into place. There you go. And then when it's there, just start screwing in this thing here. What I don't like about this is you can screw this forever. There's no stopping point really. So what they say is just screw it in, in until it's kind of hand tight and then that should be good enough. And it really is. So that's that. On the back here, let's look at the drag knob. The knob itself is just circular. It's really textured here. So you're not going to lose any grip on it. And I like it. It's really big. So if you ever need to grab onto it really quickly, you're going to grab onto it. Uh, you definitely won't slip on it. Yeah, they made an extra effort to make this big and grippable, I guess. So um, let's just see how the drag now performs. So right now it's completely disengaged. No real resistance anywhere. So let's give it one full turn. This knob turns six full revolutions, so we'll go to each full turn and see what the drag is like then. So at one full turn, again, a little more resistance, not much. And then one another full turn, gain more resistance. And the drag is really smooth on this guy. Uh, another full turn, so that's three. Some good resistance here. And four. More resistance. Five. Quite a bit of resistance there. And six. And that's that's it. Six. And you're moving it still. So it doesn't have like a dead stop on the drag, which you never really need. And it's good that there's six of them, like six rotations. So if you're ever on the water and you bump into this and you move it a little bit, it's not going to change the drag considerably. So you're not going to lose a fish by having the drag stop dead. Uh, yeah, a lot of people like this design. I'm kind of warming up to it. I kind of prefer to have just quick sets here. When you move it a quarter, it does a lot. But I can see why that people don't like that. And yeah, it just probably will be a good thing if you ever are fighting a fish and... Yeah, you're just running around, you're knocking the drag, or knocking the reel into the ground or something, or into your arm. Yeah, it's not a bad system, I'll just have to get used to it. But it does take a lot of turns. Um, yeah, they say that this drag is stronger, because it has um, more surface area being affected by the drag. Uh, yeah, great, if it makes it like the, the reel last longer and more durable, then great. But other than that, I don't know if it's going to be a big deal, but... It seems to be a good drag and it's really smooth, so yeah, that's all there is to say about that. Um, yeah, I guess some things to note about this drag, I mean this reel, is it's made in the USA, so um, there's a lot of quality behind it, and it's priced so. The drag, I mean this series starts at, uh, I think, around 425 US dollars, and it goes quite a bit higher than that, probably just under a thousand. Uh, this is the smallest model. Um, some other things, it's completely machined, so um, yeah, it's really durable, nice finish. Yeah, it's a really good solid reel. Actually, one thing I wanted to show you that is kind of interesting, this is my first Nautilus reel, so I don't know if this is available on the other ones, but I'll show you anyways. So over here, you see that there's three spring-loaded inserts. This is what makes the sound, of the, the clicking sound that you hear. So what I've noticed is the sound is kind of different than other reels that I have and I'm not liking the sound too much just because it sounds, it just sounds really foreign to me. So what you could do is you could remove these inserts and these springs and then it just changes the sound. So if you don't like any sound at all, you can remove all three inserts. It's just pretty much pulling the insert out and then pulling the spring out and that's kind of it. Um, yeah, so I think that's kind of neat. But one thing I don't like is if you pull out all three inserts, you're not going to get any sound at all. So whether you're retrieving or a fish is running, it's going to be dead silent. I kind of prefer to have the, the drag, uh, the clicking noise when the fish is running. 
Um, so depending on what your preference is, that might be something that you'd be interested in adjusting or keeping the same or just removing altogether. And that's kind of it. I'll put this guy back on and give you a final look at the reel. And other than that, I think I've touched everything. So here's the final look. And thank you for watching.